I'm Imogen from Welcome TV, spotted by West Beer, and I'm here with Richard from Gardening for the Unfulfilled and Alienated. Hi Richard, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. So your show is completely unique. Please can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it is, uh, it's incredibly unique. It's, um, it's a maximum audience of two people at a time. Uh, which is bonkers, and that's, uh, that's what sort of appealed to me about it really. It was that something that was going to scare me, and, and it really does, because once you lock that, that shed door, there's no getting away from it, so you're stuck in there for half an hour, whether, you know, uh, whether it goes well or badly or whatever, you're, you're locked in there. So, uh, so yeah, it's good, it's very unique. Every show is incredibly dependent on how the audience are reacting. Um, it's a great piece, Brad Birch has written it, it's fantastic, you know. Um, so yeah, having a lot of fun. It's a lot of shows, doing six shows a day, but for a maximum audience of two, that's, that means only 12 people a day can see it, so, so yeah. <laughs> but that's a pretty heavy schedule every day. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, no late nights for me, unfortunately. Uh, no, exactly. So I have another an Edinburgh beer, yes. But, uh, I'm saving that for a day off if I get one. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. So your show is called um, Has Gardening in the title. Have you had any people coming in not quite expecting what you were going to give them? Yeah, um, yeah, it's called Gardening for the Unfulfilled and Alienated. And uh, I think some people think they're going to have half an hour with Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> I just really not that. It's what really, a shock. Yeah, exactly, it's a massive shock. Yeah, you see, um, you see these sort of uh, more elderly audience members, should we say, turning up thinking they're going to get tips on how to prune a petunia and that's really not what happens and uh, yeah, it gets a little awkward. I how, do you, how do you deal with that? Um, I don't know, um, you've just got to get through it, you know, you've got a script, you've got to stick to it, so you just, um, you just, you just carry on playing what you're doing, you've got to be professional about it and just keep doing what you're doing. It's, um, a lot, most of them come round to the idea that it's not, it's not um, a gardening tips uh, show they're going to be seeing, but um, I think a few of them will get pretty, pretty terrified at the end of it. Um, so, do you, because it's only two people, do you find people come together in pairs, or have you had two strangers? Yeah, well, yeah, you do get strangers. Most of the time, people come in pairs, but um, but it's it's quite interesting actually when it's two people who don't know each other at all. Uh, they're normally a quieter audience because they're not reacting with each other and because I think it's such, such an intense experience with just the two people there mm. that it can feel quite uncomfortable for people. They're just on two little stools in the corner of a shed, you know. And I think if they've got somebody they know in there, they look to each other for a bit of support, you know, so they're, they're slightly more animated as an audience. But when they don't know each other at all, they tend to sit in the back of the shed and they don't know really what's going uh, to happen. But, um, but yeah, so it's an interesting dynamic when they don't know each other. Especially when you've got somebody who's there for gardening tips and somebody who's there for the, for the rude jokes. <laughs> so, um, have you ever done anything like this before? What have you done in the past? And how did you get involved with the project? Um, I haven't done anything this crazy in the yeah. past. I suppose <laughs> I've done a few crazy things in the past. But, um, but basically, I was having a chat with, um, with my agents about what I wanted to do next. And I said I wanted to do something that was going to be, was going to be tested, you know, something that was going to be terrifying. Uh, and so, wow, know, they kick. really delivered. Yeah, exactly. And the weird thing about it was when I had the phone call from my agent, I was standing, I was in my garden building a shed. Honestly. And, uh, and she phoned me up and said, uh, I, I found you something that's going to scare you. I said, right, okay, tell me about it. So she told me about it. I was like, that sounds fantastic. Send me over the script. So they sent me over the script. I read it. I said, right, I have to do this. So get me the meeting. So I went and had a meeting with Hannah, the director, who was amazing, and Brad and, and uh, Francesca. Um, and we got on really well, the meeting went really well, and uh, yeah, I was pleased to get offered it and just snapped around off Great. So yeah, it's good, it's a good one. So are you a keen gardener? <laughs> I am actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not with flowers, really. I'm more of a, I'm more of a vegetable man. Uh, <laughs> it's true, it's not, I'm not even joking. Um, but, uh, but yeah, sort of, uh, I turn my hand to a bit of gardening. So I have to keep it low maintenance now, because every year I tend to go away for sort of seven or eight months in school. Or, Anyway, but, yeah, well, yeah, you say that, it's good fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I've had to make it a bit low maintenance and uh, quite often I plant a load of veg, get it looking nice and then I'll go away and walk down. But uh, oh. which is a shame, but, uh, yeah. but I've, to, I've been able to bring some of that into this, I think, I hope. Some of your own experiences. Some of my own experiences of uh, how devastating it is to, <laughs> to lose a courgette plant. Much worse than losing a pet, a courgette. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, definitely, yeah. it'll devastate. What are you most looking forward to um, in your month in your month at the fringe? Uh, what other show-wise? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, there's loads. Uh, loads that I'm going to see today. Actually, I'm going to see Robert Golding mm -hmm. um, at the. I can't remember where it is, but Robert Golick. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the radicalisation of Bradley Manning. I'm really looking forward to um, I'm with the band, both Tim Price shows, I'm a massive fan of Tim's. Um, obviously, Free Bag, I've seen it three times now. You're interviewing Phoebe's in a minute, mm -hmm. she's amazing. Um, yeah, there's loads of stuff I'm looking forward to. Uh, another friend of mine showed Titi Bar Ha Ha. Huh. Yeah, which sounds, uh, sounds interesting, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, there's loads and loads of stuff that I'm really looking forward to actually. It's, it's, it's an exciting fringe. Great. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Not at um, all. Where can we catch your show? Uh, we are in the Pleasant Courtyard in a little shed and it says Undead Theatre on the side of it. Um, and uh, as you're walking up towards the Grand, mm -hmm. it's just there on the left. And uh, yeah, you could easily walk past it and dismiss it as a shed. But it is a shed. <laughs> it is a shed. It absolutely is a shed, but it's, uh, it's a fully functioning performance space and it's. Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting piece. Great, thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks for having me. I've been Imogen for Waffle TV.